Lama Tenzin is an ordinary Tibetan monk with an extraordinary mission. For the first time in seven years, Lama Tenzin is taking 11 children on an incredible journey back to their roots. In the year 2001, he rescued these children from miserable living conditions in Upper Dolpo, one of the most remote regions of Nepal. Lama Tenzin built a home for the children in India, and started the Children's Education Development Society, the CED, where they could receive health care and education in a nourishing environment. Uh, the mission is special. We are taking care for the, the children who is special in the Himalaya border region and who is uh, totally hopeless, is out from the communities, out from the caste. So those are the children we rescue and give the opportunity to, through the education, to stand in the you know, communities. These children have not seen their homes since the day they left for the CED. For some, the separation has lasted as long as seven years. Their parents hold on to the bright hope that these children will return home to uplift their communities one day. This is the story of the first of many homecomings for the children. On this journey, Lama Tenzin intends to keep two promises. First, he has promised the children that they will be in their parents' arms again. And second, he promises their families that they will see how education has changed the lives of the children. Before they begin, Lama Tenzin makes sure that they are spiritually prepared here at the Budhanath Stupa Shrine in Kathmandu. This has been an important pilgrimage site for Tibetan Buddhists since the 13th century. Every spin of the turning prayer wheels generates goodwill and peace under the serene gaze of the Buddha's all-seeing eyes. The Himalayas are famous for having the highest mountains in the world. Mention the Himalayas and we picture men and women of all nationalities risking their lives to scale Everest or K2. Those that succeed are glorified for their accomplishments in the climbing world. But unlike most Himalayan expeditions, this one is not about the mighty footsteps of men and women conquering the world's highest mountains. This journey is about the small yet meaningful steps of children guided by a determined young man. <laughs> like thousands of other expeditions that begin here, this journey has all the excitement and danger of a classic Himalayan adventure. Mountain passes at altitudes of 18,000 feet, extreme weather conditions, and even the ever-present possibility of death. This expedition will proceed on foot for 30 days. They will need to take everything they need with them, including 30 days worth of food, equipment, 
medical supplies, and gifts for the village children they will be meeting along the way. Traveling with them is Lama Tenzin's sister, Pempa. Pempa is the CED foster mother of the children of Dalpo. One day before the track, Lama called me and they said, you have to go. And I go with the children and I said, would you like to go to your place? They said, yes. I said, we're going to see your parents. And I said, you know, especially me. I said, I would like to go with you guys if you want to take me. And they were so happy and they said, yes, uh, we like to take you to the, our parents. And I said, let's go. We'll, do, we'll go together. And they was prepared uh, because I think the more than physically, you need to mentally prepare for anything to do. The children are ready. The excitement of the journey ahead and the coming reunion with their families is etched on their faces. The children finally begin their voyage to their villages of Charka, Karang, Saldang, and Marang in the Himalayan border region of Dalpo. Though Dalpo is a remote and ancient mountain region, its territories have been drawn into political interests in the Himalayas. Dalpo became part of Nepal in the 19th century. The children of Dalpo were born on the borders of Nepal, India, and Tibet. In their harsh realities, it seems they belong nowhere. In the border children, uh, they look like Tibetan traditional and they are Buddhisms, but they live in the, under the Nepali governments, like or the Indian governments. But the Indian and Nepali, they always say, oh, no, no, they are Tibetans. And then when the Tibetans, they, will, they try to get help from Tibetan, they say, oh, no, they are Indian or they are Nepali. From Kathmandu, they will fly to Jomsom on a commercial airline. From there, it will be a 30-day trek to their villages. The children look forward to the airplane ride. For Sandup, this is a dream. He wants to become a pilot when he grows up. I feel very happy to ride this, to ride this, to fly up in the eye, to see how many things in the down. I'm very excited to see this, that's it. I feel very good because I'm, I, I have first time to, to get into airplane. And I'm so excited to meet my parents. Very uh, exciting about this trip uh, because this is a really big mission of CED Society. That we dream about that we last eight years. Now it's going to become true. Now they are very happy and they said, "Yeah, we'll go up and we're going to tell everybody that how important the education of their life." Before the children can board their flight, the skies cloud over and rain begins to pour. The flight has been canceled and the children's hopes are dampened. I don't like it. I don't want to go, go, go. It doesn't matter whatever happens. And also, like they say, it might be worse weather. I don't want to take it, like they say, weather trembling and all this stuff. Okay? However, Lama Tenzin does not consider the cancellation an obstacle to his plans. If they cannot go by air, then they will proceed on land. Jenny, you are. Yeah. Lama Tenzin commandeers a bus to take them as far as the village of Beni. May you saw the luggage? We are commitment to where definitely these children, after seven years, they're going back to village. And my responsibility, I commitment to has to go back to meet with the families. That's my commitment. The children continue on their way, but instead of being transported through the air, they travel along the bumpy back roads of Nepal.
The journey is beset with delays and obstructions. First on their way to Benny, they must transfer to another vehicle. Then their bus gets stuck in the mud. The driver went to check out the road. It is good, so we can continue the same bus. We don't need to take uh, unloading, loading stuff, things, uh, luggage. So that's good. Um, the driver will be back, then we can see how to work. The children are waiting once again, but they remain patient. <laughs> Actually, you know, the, we have uh, two four by four jeep we are renting, but you know, actually they have uh, something emergency. The jeep person they come and they request for us to the you know the emergency. This man he has emergency. Can he go first? So we say okay, let them go first because we have a uh, actually we have the busy schedule, but still we can handle it because this man is like really going to die. So we offer for them to take first. Lama Tenzin, in his humility, will not say so himself, but he has just carried out a quiet act of compassion for his fellow human beings. Although the children's journey is of great importance, the sick man's life comes first. They finally have both jeeps back, and they are raring to go. Today, Lama Tenzin and the children are aiming to reach the town of Jomsom. It is only the second day of the children's journey, and already their route begins to look perilous. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Up ahead, a landslide of massive boulders blocks the road. It will take days to clear the way. Dynamite will be needed, but it will take another day to get explosives to the site. Again, Lama Tenzin refuses to wait or turn back. He and the children jump into action. Pempa and the older children help him build a makeshift shelter to keep the small children dry. <laughs> Pema Lamo is 15 years old. When she left her village of Karang to join Lama Tenzin, 
She was 10 years old and could not read or write. If she had stayed on in Karang, she might have been married and with child by the age of 14. I am uh, oldest children of CED. Uh, I am I'm take care of all children, uh, all children. I'm, I'm, uh, I make, a, I make for food all children and I see, a, I see for all children. This is my, 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 mm, uh, like this. My, this is my uh, duties. Karma left his village with Lama Tenzin when he was three years old. Back in their villages in Dolpo, the children would be carrying back-breaking loads every day. Children such as these, who were from the lower caste of society, would spend their childhood working without time for school, dreams, or ambitions. I have to learn, edu learn education and knowledge uh, from CED because because all we all we all have no any no any education and they need doctor and they need some pilot and they need some some uh, artist uh, they need some beautician the other else and I and when I grow up I became into a doctor. <laughs> At last they arrive in Chomsom. What should have been a simple one-hour flight has taken them three days of grueling road travel. The roads into the mountains stop here. From Johnson, the children will begin the long walk home. They meet Mr. Thinley, who is the chief of the Dalpo village of Saldang. Mr. Thinley is highly respected throughout Dalpo. He helps Lama Tenzin organize his expeditions in search of children to rescue. This time, Mr. Thinley cannot come along. He has been diagnosed with cancer. His daughter Dawa will go with the children up to Sadang. The people of 